In this video, we'll examine the fate of pyruvate. If you recall from the last video, pyruvate molecules, two of them, are formed at the end of glycolysis. Initially, one glucose molecule is phosphorylated by two ATPs to produce two three-carbon molecules. And these three carbon molecules go through a number of different reactions and ultimately the end result is that we get the production of four ATPs and two NADHs. And the, the whole thing ends with the production of two pyruvate molecules. In this video we want to take a look at some of the fates of pyruvate. Here's our pyruvate molecule. You can see that it still has three carbons and a fair amount of bond energy left. So it's not completely tapped out for energy. Three different things can happen to it. There are two anaerobic pathways and one aerobic pathway. Uh, in this video, we'll just take a look at the anaerobic pathways and we'll save the aerobic pathway for the next video. Depending on what type of an organism the pyruvate is formed in, different pathways will occur. And which pathway is taken depends on which enzymes the organism has. So for example, in organisms like yeast, in the absence of oxygen, you would get the formation of ethanol. And if we look closely at the ethanol molecule, we'll see that it only has two carbons. Um, there's been some changes with the oxygens as well, but the question is, how do you go from a three carbon molecule up here to a two carbon molecule? Well, something has to happen. We actually do lose some carbon when two molecules of carbon dioxide are formed. And it's the two carbon dioxide molecules because there were two pyruvate molecules formed at the end of glycolysis. So here it looks like we've only lost one carbon and that's because there's actually two ethanol molecules and each one has lost a carbon and some oxygen as well, four oxygens. So here you can see that it's already a two carbon molecule but this isn't ethanol. There has to be another step that occurs and this little step here is actually really really important because it requires two NADH molecules to come in and donate a bit of energy to convert the acetaldehyde to ethanol. Now the yeast organism is not going out of its way because it wants to create alcohol and be a uh, helper to people who want to make wine or beer or anything like that. There is a really important reason for this step. Can you guess what that reason might be? Well, we have to look back at the previous steps of glycolysis and get a clue from there. So let's take a look. In glycolysis, you remember these two NADH molecules that were formed? There's a limited number of NAD molecules in the cell cytoplasm. Uh, it's a very large organic molecule made from the B vitamin niacin. And so that's why there's a limited supply. So it actually needs to be recycled. And if it doesn't get recycled, this step basically is the last step. And you get no production of pyruvate. But more importantly, you would get no production of ATP. And you would just end up being in the hole by two ATP without the gain of these four ATP over here. So this NADH has to be recycled back into NAD. Well, how to do it? Well, the way that the yeast organism manages that is that it actually does convert NADH to NAD by donating that hydrogen back to acetaldehyde and in so doing forming ethanol. But more importantly for the yeast organism, NAD is produced again and so it can be recovered and it can be used again to keep driving this system so that more ATP can be produced. One of the other pathways that's uh, possible is another anaerobic pathway and this one does not occur in yeast organisms. It occurs in places like our muscles and it occurs under conditions where we're making demands on our muscles uh, that exceed the amount of oxygen that we're actually giving them. So normally our muscles would do aerobic respiration. They'd be following this pathway and there'd be a lot of uh, ATP being generated from muscle contraction. But if we push ourselves to the complete limit, we weight lift as heavily, heavy as we can to the point where our muscles are exhausted or we sprint until we can't run anymore and we're actually in pain, we actually have to stop. Um, that's due to the fact that we're just not getting oxygen to the muscle cells quickly enough. And so rather than doing the aerobic pathway here, it has to switch to an anaerobic pathway here. And it's a very, very simple 
simple pathway because there's really only one reaction and that's where the pyruvate gets converted to lactic acid and lactic acid is that nasty stuff it's actually quite toxic that ends up uh, in our muscles and it's part of what causes muscle pain when we really really push ourselves it's not harmful to us even though it's toxic because it forces us to stop exercising and as a result it uh, ends up that we continue breathing quite heavily afterwards. We're bringing more oxygen in than our muscles are demanding at the time, but we're kind of uh, making up for the oxygen deficit or debt that was there when we were pushing ourselves so hard that we couldn't get oxygen there quickly enough. And so that's why we keep breathing heavily after we're finished exerting ourselves. And what that does is it actually uh, reverses this reaction and it'll actually convert back to pyruvate and then pyruvate can go through the aerobic pathway and we can produce a whole lot of ATP because you can see that in this pathway no ATP gets produced. We basically are functioning on only those measly two ATP that were produced in the glycolysis pathway. There is a mistake on this page. I wonder if you can see it. If you take a look at the pathway over here with the yeast, you'll see that two carbon dioxide were formed and you can actually account for the carbons because you can see the three carbon molecule pyruvate changing to the two carbon molecule acetaldehyde and then ethanol. But on the other side here where we're talking about muscle glycolysis or lactic acid formation, we're going from a three carbon molecule to another three carbon molecule and so actually there is no carbon dioxide formed here. You should make sure that you, you scribble that out because this is lactic acid. It's got three carbons on it. So this is called lactic acid fermentation or sometimes it's called muscle glycolysis. And this, this is not a satisfactory pathway uh, in multicellular organisms. It's sort of a temporary pathway until the oxygen is again available and then the aerobic pathway, which is the favored pathway and really the only one that keeps multicellular organisms alive until that that can be resumed. If you're stuck in anoxic conditions or conditions with no oxygen for too long, a multicellular organism would actually eventually die because this pathway does not generate any more ATP. We still have a lot of bond energy locked up in lactic acid and that wouldn't be accessible to the organism for the cells to perform their life functions. So the important thing to remember is that anaerobic pathways occur when oxygen is absent. In multicellular organisms it's temporary. The sprinters are pushing themselves to their limit and they're probably sprinting for maybe a hundred meters, maybe nine seconds. They're pushing their muscles all out. They're in an anaerobic condition unlike something like a marathon runner who is in an aerobic condition because they're not pu pushing their muscles to max out in a very short period of time. Other organisms like the yeast that cause this bread to rise and the yeast that grows on fruit and eventually um, can help brewers to create alcoholic beverages like wine and beer and this yeast right here under anaerobic conditions they actually do the uh, alcohol fermentation shown over here and the byproduct is the ethanol. So if you're a brewer, uh, you do want to make sure that the fermentation is going on in the absence of oxygen because you want to get this particular product. Yeast can actually go either way. It can actually also function in the presence of oxygen, in which case it would be doing the aerobic pathway and the end product of that is not ethanol. So just to summarize again, uh, here is alcohol fermentation. It occurs in yeast and some bacteria. The net ATP produced is two ATP and that's from glycolysis. There's actually no ATP produced during fermentation. And the other important thing is that the NADH is recycled back to NAD so that it can be reused in glycolysis and keep that glycolysis process going. If this does not occur, glycolysis grinds to a halt and absolutely no ATP is produced and in fact there's still a debt of 2 ATP. And of course that carbon off the pyruvate uh, is lost to produce carbon dioxide and that's what you would see if you were a brewer um, coming up uh, through this device and exiting from the sealed container. And you want to keep this sealed up if you were a brewmaster because the minute you open it up oxygen comes in and that yeast stops doing the anaerobic pathway and it would start doing the aerobic pathway. Here's what's happening in multicellular organisms like ourselves. If you're doing power activities like sprinting or power 
lifting and we're depriving our muscles of oxygen because we're pushing them so hard we can't breathe fast enough to get enough oxygen to them for the demand we're placing on them we simply convert the pyruvic acid or the pyruvate to lactic acid and this is still a three carbon molecule lots of bond energy that's still in this molecule that is not being tapped out and not being converted to ATP so it's not very efficient Here's a good question. Uh, why do humans not produce alcohol in their muscles when oxygen is absent? So if you can think about it and uh, come back to class and uh, maybe discuss that with some of your classmates. In the next video, we'll take a look at the aerobic